Hi, and welcome to the Virtually Yours podcast, Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed, the no BS hustle-free podcast for business owners who outsource or provide outsourcing services. I'm your host, Rosie Shiloh, virtual assistant advocate and owner of Virtually Yours, the virtual assistant network. Let's get started. Hey everyone and welcome to today's episode of Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed where I have the extraordinarily vibrant Jenny DeLacy, the visibility coach. So it's probably a good thing that you're vibrant because you're the visibility coach, eh? Probably, yeah, Yeah, that's true. Yeah, (laughs) welcome to the house and I've got Jenny here today to talk about a little bit of a slack area that she's identified within our sort of business arena that VAs may want to sort of step up into to be able to feel. Isn't that right, Jenny? Yeah, absolutely. Um, apart from the, the main reasons people avoid using video in their, in their businesses, which we can talk about too if you want to, the main, one of the things that comes up time and time again is that people don't want to actually do any of the editing. They don't really know how to post it. So I call them the mechanics of, of video that people, mm-hmm. it's, it puts them off. And I just think it's a huge opportunity for VAs that are interested in social media but, but have a technical kind of um, vibe to them that, that they would, are happy to learn that stuff. That would be, I think that would really fill a gap and be a really good marketing idea. I love it. Um, I think if, if I was doing VA work, that is definitely an area I would jump into. So let's step back for a second. Tell me a little bit about what you do as the visibility... Why are you the visibility coach? Mm, um, when I stopped working in corporate learning and development. I'd been doing online learning and classroom training, facilitating, speaking for 25 years or so. And I stopped, uh, I'm a solo parent, so I stopped that sort of work because it's always full time and the money is great, but it's, it's pretty full on in big change projects, you know, multi-million dollar sort of budgets and really anxious um, strategic managers and stuff. And I was like, oh no, I've got enough of that going on at home. So I came back and um, hung out with the boys a lot more and they were um, 14, 11 and 10 at the time. Now they're 20, 17 and and 15. Wow. Um, But I thought I want to be a copywriter. I'm I'm pretty good at, you know, writing, but I think it's because I needed a break secretly um, from people. Uh, But actually what I'm really good at is educating people and helping people and working with groups of people. So when, as a visibility coach, what I do is I run a Facebook group that's uh, a free community and I have my paid community of um, visible leaders that are learning my uh, process for working out who the audience is, what they need to say and how to actually go ahead and and record face-to-camera video content. So personal branding video is really my, my specialty and I absolutely love it. And I've got, you know, probably every two months I'll be launching that online group. It's a small group. Um, coaching program and I've got some you know I do workshops and stuff from time to time as well in in person so yeah and that that course that you're running um I mean slight segue here but it's only recently been launched but I've also already heard rave v- reviews so that's well great. done you yeah well, thanks oh that's great it's just really giving as much value per kind of chunk of information as I can and then refine it you know how when you first launch a course, you know that you're going to make changes and you get feedback and you do something about it and then you, you keep refining it without it being too onerous, hopefully. Um, So yeah, I really encourage people. That's actually a really good idea too for some VAs to support people in launching their courses. What would that look like? How would you help them with, with managing the content and the content library and the videos that go for each module and things like that? I think there's so much scope for VAs to be a really good support for this sort of thing. I know a number of VAs who are actually supporting business owners with launching their courses. Um, and it is an interesting thing because the, the whole rise of video on social media channels is kind of really aligned with online courses and allowing us to keep modifying and tweaking it. But the support, as you mentioned to me earlier, the support around helping people with getting their videos out there or, um, you know, setting up the processes of that, the mechanics, as you mentioned before, there's not a huge amount that I'm aware of anyway Mm. um, of VAs who are really specialising in that area. No. Well, I haven't been able to find, I think I found one a few years ago, Um, but I still think that there's better packaging and better pricing around 
do you want to be a YouTube specialist? Well, I know how to set up your YouTube channel. I know how to, and all the intricacies of that. And there's quite a lot of detail and so much support on YouTube itself. That in itself could be a thing. Mm -hmm. like, or it could be, you know, if you go on Fiverr, um, which I know is a dirty word and as it should be, if you go in there and all of the services they provide around video gives, gives a VA a really good, I guess, snapshot of what could be in the, in the service provider in, in your sort of packaging and your, um, and your offerings because people go there for the intro to their videos. They might go there for um, some editing. They might go there for music overlay or for there's sort of all these different kind of bits and pieces that could fit. Mm -hmm. And social media, of course, is at the other end in the publishing um, part of your videos. So it kind of depends um, what skill set VAs have and whether they want to be creative or whether they actually really love being very technical in the background as well. Yeah. And bringing it all together, because that's one of the things that, you know, we struggle with as business owners is trying to find this cost effective solution means that we're kind of grabbing stuff from here, there and everywhere. Um, and I was actually talking to someone about that this morning about how we end up with, you know, 700 different software programs that we're using that are free or cheap. Um, but it costs us so much more at the end of the day. Yeah. And so you need to just kind of suck it up really and, and get something or someone who has that complete package so that you're saving your time and your effort. And at the end of the day, you're going to have that ability to make more money because you're doing it right and you're saving that time. So oh, and hopefully it's out faster to market. One yeah. of the things that I talk about a lot um, to my paid group and it's interesting because at Click Engage Convert last week, Ben Amos said it too, rapid pro, um, product creation. How do you create content quickly and get it to market faster? And I'm very much, this is how you do it. This is my method. Go do it. Follow this and you'll get stuff out faster than everybody else because you're not belly aching about every detail. You're just getting it out there. You're not doing over editing. You're not crazily trying to do a new thing every time you create a video you're just following the same format that I teach you every single time imagine if a VA could say okay all you've got to do is 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 record your one minute video get it into our Dropbox or our Google Drive or whatever and leave it to me and I've got a process I follow and the thing is actually up and published within the hour or within the day or or whatever mm. that, that, that sort of rapid creation by following a process is really powerful yeah um, knowing that you can just hand it over to somebody and you've done the talking or whatever and then don't think about it. How much time is that going to save people? Uh, you know, learning tech is a nightmare. If you haven't got time, I actually really resist. Yeah. So I do what I absolutely have to do, but I know I could probably have a better video product. I'd definitely have a better YouTube channel if someone else was looking after some of the stuff in the background. You know, what would that look like? How would that, what would that be like? to get it up there and out there and know that it's going to happen every Tuesday. That would be awesome. No. Yeah. And, and some people find that technical side blocks their creative side. So it's a hindrance to them to then have to go, oh, all right, now I've got to do the mechanics of this. Mm. Um, and yeah, as you said, they resist, but there's also, yeah, some people, they just, it really blocks their ability to, to really go with the flow and to, to create fresh stuff. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So the thought of, oh, God, then I've got to upload it, then I've got to do this thing to it, then I'm going to have to watch it millions of times and then I'm going to... No, that's not true. That's not entirely true. If you've got someone else who knows the format to follow, mm -hmm. it will be fast. And, and I'm sure that your um, community have very... They, they're good process-driven people so that you've put in, instilled in them there's a process and you follow it, whereas a lot of creative people just don't see it that way and they, don't, they spend all this time trying to do something that, that someone else that's more process minded is going to get done in like a quarter of the time probably. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So that, that's sort of what made me want to talk to you about it because I think um, it's such, it's something that's really needed, but it also has scope for VAs who have different, um, different passions. It doesn't have to be about the tech. It could be that they've decided that they love SEO and writing. So they could be the YouTube person or they could be the, you know, um, write the script maybe from time to time or there's so much scope in here, I think, for, for someone one who really has something they want to offer and just wants to be a specialist. Now, not everybody wants to be. Mm -hmm. I do. I'm a very much, I very much want to be the only one. Yeah. I want to be a specialist. So I think this lends itself to, to niching really beautifully as well. 
Yeah. So that just gave me a bit of a thought. Like people do resist, including VAs, resist getting out and doing more video, which is something that you're very passionate about. Do you think, I mean, part of it is our concerns about how we look and blah, blah, blah. Mm. But is it also the fact that, you know, you've got to think, okay, well, how am I going to record this? How am I going to edit this? You know, if I get that program on my phone to edit it, it can only do this amount of this. And then how, where do I put it on YouTube and what do I write with it? And so, yeah, all those bits and pieces that someone should offer as a package, mm. people get on it. Mm. Um, you know, is that what's turning people off? Doing yeah, I, more? I think apart from the nerves and the concern about, oh, I don't like how I sound, I don't know how I look, which is really common, and, yeah. dudes, and dudes feel it too, interestingly. They don't admit it as much, but they definitely feel it. Um, the guesswork, I think, puts people off. Mm. What, which, which editor? Jenny, what editor? And I'm actually, like, my threshold for answering that level of detail is done, like I'm done. Yeah. So I put a little resource pack together for my paid group and I'm going to put that... Um, resource in my big group as well and say there's the resources don't ask me about tripods and lights because I actually it's not about the tripod just do the thing but I yeah. think there's guesswork around oh, which editor do I have to use do I have to put something fancy at the beginning and the end do I have to be on all the platforms does it have to be square or am I in portrait or am I in landscape take the guesswork away for people and we'll find that the more people that are ready to step up and be more visible leaders will do it with more ease because I don't, there's no, the self doubt might still be there, but the guesswork someone else might be able to take care of for them. And mm. I've actually invited, I said to a few people, if you've got a VA, invite them to the group. They can learn from me instead of you if you want. Fantastic. You can, yeah. I, I thought the other day, this is going to be something that I think people who have a VA should say, can you go and do Jenny's course? Or the, the person with the VA does part of the course because they need to speak to the camera. But the, the last bit could be, you know, maybe the VA takes over and does the rest of it and does mm -hmm. the learning and goes, I don't need to even come up with the instructions. And then they take it and they run with it with their own everything because they're going to make it better. Yeah. That, you know, um, people that just do that section are always going to make it better than I can show you how to do it, I think, because you'll always have your own sort of propensity to be more and more awesome on a particular platform or whatever. Um, but yeah, I just think that it's such a, an opportunity. So maybe we should talk about what are the sort of, what are the different elements that I see? And maybe you could relate that back to the industry and the people that you know in your community and, and give it more context than I can give it. Do you want to do that? Mm, yeah. Um, let's say the process goes like this. I have a focus. So maybe I'm launching a course. Maybe my social media is a little bit drab and I need to make it a little bit more awesome so people see me better. Maybe it's time to do blogs and I want to do a video per blog. So usually people have some kind of focus. Yeah. We kind of need to do all the things, but I encourage everybody, just pick, just pick something. Just pick one focus. Please. <laughs> and then what happens out of that is a content plan and a strategy where we get deeper into who is the person that you are speaking the words to. Who is that person? What do they need from you? And the content strategy falls out of that. Yes. And then we do a little more video planning. So it's, okay, here's my video idea. And I think these are the three things I need to say. Here's a tiny little script, which is like a post-it note. I'm going to press record on my camera, on my computer, on my phone, record it. And because I've set myself up and I, the light's quite nice. And so there's those sort of set up things that happen. And I've got my equipment, so I've got a tripod or something. And then once the, the file is done, then it needs some soft editing or hard editing, depending on how long the videos are, as you know. Um, uh, if it's a course video, it might be longer, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, so slight editing, branding, and then uploading, publishing to multiple uh, platforms. Yeah. Uh, and in amongst that would also be um, just choosing, I think, the format of each video, I actually think it's quicker to re-record them. If you need it in two orientations, just do it twice. Don't try and edit it into a different format. It's painfully long-winded when you could have just created another video in under two minutes. So why wouldn't you do that? Um, and then there's a little bit of SEO, probably description writing, tags, titles for videos. All that stuff happens in the publishing stage. Mm -hmm. Even if it's not YouTube, even on um, captions and things like that on um, Facebook and on LinkedIn, they all need 
you need captions files and you need how to have you need to know how to manage the upload of all of those things and then i guess there's the measure the measures after that was that the right sort of content did we post it at the right time and social media managers will know this where they do that sort of analytics um is it for a facebook ad well then we're going to do a split test is it for uh, is it for youtube advertise um yeah youtube ads or google ads or where's it going to live so there's a different sort of range of skills per platform because mm. they're quite some of them are quite different to the others yeah um, and then there it lives and there it goes and how do we amplify it where else can we sit it where else can it go how else can we get more and more eyeballs and reach for each piece of video content that goes out there so that's your social media expertise it's more generalist but it's definitely still a special skill in knowing how to manage all those platforms and how content behaves in all those places as well yeah it's quite a long it's not a long process only like six steps or something but there's scope i think in pretty much every step except maybe the first couple mm. 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 nice i like it it gives you a lot of ideas of yeah so th there's different people there that have um i mean you've got transcriptionists in there that are going to be great for your captions um and so things when you're working together, so you're talking before about, okay, so this is a video area um, where you can be stepping up and providing that service, but you could be doing this in small teams where, you know, you've got that sort of support. I know captions is one of my pain points. I thought I loaded a, a video the other day to Facebook with the captions. I did like the CRT file and everything, and I can't see the captions appearing on it. It's doing my head in. Yeah. I don't know if anyone else can. No, Facebook is a pain in the ass because what happens is you upload the right bloody file, it'll show on the desktop, yes. but then if, if people are watching on their phone, the captions aren't even there anymore. And that's yeah. really common, really common. And that's so, where they want it. On their phone is where they want the caption. I know. So we're better off embedding the srt file in the editing process so it's part of the video file instead uh -huh. of it's not on youtube but definitely on facebook I've, I've just started saying to people you know i think we're just going to have to start editing them in so they're permanent you can't turn them off mm. but don't, don't do that on youtube because people turn the captions on and off yes but on facebook just leave them on all the time so have them in the actual mp4 I never episode. thought of that, mm. which is stupid because I do a lot of video editing. <laughs> yeah, note to self. <laughs> but so there, yeah, you've got those little steps there. Um, and with the, you know, SEO side of it, the branding, making it look good and vibrant. As someone who is amazing with Camtasia, for, for example, mm. um, might hate like setting up the captions and social media. So you could be working together in small teams to be like a bit of what I call a powerhouse yep. um, or power team and just be, yeah, providing these, you know, mm -hmm. quick turnaround jobs for people, especially yeah. if, if they know. So if you, VAs out there and business owners, if you know that someone's done Jenny's training, then you'll know what that process is so you can create the solution um, so as business owners, you know that these, you ask these VAs, do you know this process that Jenny's done? And VAs, you can say to the clients, do you know? And if, you, if they don't know, then you both go ahead and attend her training and mm -hmm. then you're going to save heck of a lot of time and effort down the track. Yeah, and I think the, you get instructions, you know, for across multiple platforms, but the one that's the most technical is YouTube. And I think that a lot of business owners want, to be industry famous on YouTube. So they want to be an industry expert. They want to be the go-to person for their industry. So they might focus on clients on Facebook and, and LinkedIn or whatever, but YouTube is a whole other level of ego. It's about, I want to stand out for being like top of my game here. Unless you do educational how-to videos like I do, there's a lot of people I've spoken to recently that are like, I'm really attracted to having a YouTube channel because they don't need to go to a TV studio or go to Channel 31 or you can just create your own TV show, yeah. quite frankly. Anybody can do it. But the, technic the, the technicalities around YouTube are quite interesting. The algorithm is very different. So all of us that have got expertise in Facebook, you've got to spend just as much time on YouTube to really make it work. Yeah. You've got to be in there. You've got to be commenting on other people's videos. You've got to have a, quite a clear strategy. 
And I am desperate for the time to be able to do it because I, I know how much I'll love it, but I just haven't been able to. And I think that if someone else stepped up and said, I know the audience you're looking for because I'm, I'm kind of part of it. So what if, what if I could do this? And then it's a matter of how do you then price it and package it for someone so that you can, you know, take it off their hands and, and do it for them. Um, I don't know anyone who has said to me in the last 15 years, Rosie, I put together YouTube strategies for people. Mm. But it's becoming more and more prevalent. Yeah. We, we want to be known. YouTube has a totally different audience, different behaviour of the people on yeah. that watch things on there. Like, you know, I know that you and I, we would type in a... Um, what did I do the other day? I'd forgotten how big the thumbnail needed to be for, or something. I can't remember now. Yeah. And I was looking, I thought, how do, how do I create a custom thumbnail? They've changed the, um, not thumbnail, captions. They've changed the auto caption process in YouTube. And I was like, I think it's easier. I think it's actually, you can download the SRT directly from YouTube now, which is you like. You can, cool. yes. But I can't seem to do it. It won't let me, I can't work it out. It's not letting me do it. So I was typing in, I find an answer. I watch the video, it's eight minutes long. I'm like, oh God, just, and then it didn't work. Then I look for another one. But a lot of us use YouTube for that. But also a lot of people, if you think about, um, you can watch serial content on YouTube now. Oh, ask my children. Yeah. 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 Um, and adults are the same. I, I'll go, right. I want to watch every Marie Folio TV show from the last because she does Q&A Tuesday and I just have it on loop while I am in the shower, I'm getting ready and there's all these different questions and I sometimes I watch five in a row and they're all her, you, you know, I mean, she does have a TV studio actually, but. Can I ask you something? Mm. I do that too sometimes with podcasts and stuff, but I feel kind of awkward about the fact that I am naked in the shower while they're talking to me. Do you oh. have issues with that at all? <laughs> I only just thought about it then, actually. Thank you. But what I think I might do from future is turn the phone around in case. This is so weird that you said that because the other day I had my phone sort of on my bedside table and I think I was sort of standing there in my undies or something and I remember actually putting it on its face just in case the camera was working. <laughs> I thought, randomly, am I going to end up on YouTube like a fatty, like a, what was that? So I think that's, I actually do that and I didn't even know it. I think I face it away from the shower. Oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> I met a guy the other day. I was at the optometrist. But it's sort of one of those older guys that's kind of, he won't buy a new TV because he knows that people are watching him through the new TV. And I was trying to convince him that that is like a community service. If someone is that entertained by watching you on the couch doing whatever the heck it is you're doing, really, you should let them because they don't have a lot. Correct. Right. And I think that if someone wants to watch me drinking like hot chocolate after hot chocolate while I'm playing on my phone while the TV's on and that brings them joy, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. Who are, and he, who goes, are he goes, you that? don't know what I do in front of the TV. <laughs> and I'm going, well, now I do. <laughs> but, yeah, I've listened to, you know, a couple of um, great podcasts on while I'm in the shower. And, yeah, I just kind of feel like, do they know that I'm, doing, I'm in the shower? I'm in the shower. I hope if actually, if anyone listens to my podcast in the shower, please let me know. I want to know. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Maybe that'll be a, a thing. Like <laughs> maybe we could put a poll up and yeah. say, okay, we recognize that there are walking podcasts. Mm -hmm. There are driving podcasts, but there are definitely shower podcasts. There are. Who do you listen to when you're having a shower? Why do I choose to listen to that when I'm in the shower and not in the car or walking? Yeah. I actually don't know. Mm. I don't know either. Mm. I I don't know. It depends on my mood. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I've got it. There's a VA on my network. Bless her con socks. She has been walking while listening to this podcast. And the other day she clocked up something like 13,000 steps before like 9am because she loved the podcast so much. She just kept on walking. So oh, she was listening fantastic. to more. Oh, look at you helping them and getting them fit. That's yeah, amazing. she's like she's like Rosie Shiloh, secret personal trainer. I'm like, yay! <laughs> oh, that's so good. I love it. Like, but, all these things we didn't even know we did. I don't. 
have showers together, walk together. That's it. We're having showers together. Mm. So with YouTube, because I love that you've brought that up, I feel like I, I know one of my Viva members, I was like, people, please follow me, subscribe to me on YouTube. I need some friends. And one of them said to me, this is last year, I think, they, they, um, their son said to them, why would I follow her? She's only got a few followers. Like, you know, she's not follow worthy. And I'm like, oh, my heart is broken. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't, I don't understand the algorithms and all that for, for YouTube. I don't know what I need to be putting in the description and the tags and, and whatnot. I really don't know how to be found on YouTube. Yeah. And it's, it's one of those things that we, we've got to get smarter about it. You know, there's a, there's a trillion searches on Google every day. Mm. And if you have a video, if you have video on YouTube in particular, um, that answers that, that search query, you, you're going to end up starting, you know, getting higher and higher in the search ranking because they don't tend, Google doesn't tend to push video from other platforms. It's going to push video from YouTube, isn't it, that answers mm. that search query. And so um, that means your video title is important, how close to a natural sounding um, search query is it, yeah. which means the same video might be called something different on another platform. And that's okay. You know, can, you, we, can you load a video up multiple times on YouTube and just give it different names? Mm, no, because it recognises the file because I've tried. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, could, you could upload it to a different channel. Yeah. But you couldn't upload it twice to the same channel. That's, right. my, that's my understanding anyway. Because I did do it one time and it said this video is already here. And I thought, how does it know? So it's obviously it knows the file. It must know the file. Um, the meta... The meta data of the file from my laptop to YouTube. So, so you have to tweak that, it. So whether you go back to the video info panel when you're in your finder or um, when you're in your my files, you can change the metadata about each file in there. Maybe, mm. that, maybe that means you could do it. Or um, you just edit the original video slightly, re-export it. Yes. Yeah, and it'll have new that. data. Yeah, that's right. You Are we going to get in trouble for this? YouTube, uh, tell us if we're going to... No. <laughs> So when you think about it, if I had one, let's say a video idea and I've created um, a video that's about three top nerve busting tips, camera presentation confidence tips or whatever I choose to call it. Most people type in um, nerves or presentation skills. There's a few different ways I've found people type that question in. How can I stop being so nervous on camera? How, yeah. can, I, how can I get rid of nerves? Um, so whatever we choose to call it, there's three tips in there. And I could do my intro and say, here are the three tips. Bang, 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 one sentence each. And my call to action, 30 second video. I could also do the opposite and I could make it a five minute video. And for each of those chunks of thing that I'm talking about, I'm giving them statistics and a story and some um, juicy sort of case study or some examples of people that tried a thing and put some science in it and make it really long and then cut it down into several other chunks of video by themselves. So each one of those three is its own video as well. Mm -hmm. So if, you, if VAs can be smart about repurposing content, I, I reckon that would make a massive difference yeah. as well. It's not just about one video file. It's about how much else can I do with this thing, yeah. you know? Is there an intro I could pull out to put on, you know, in a story on Instagram for them? Is there a, you know, and I think that VAs that know multi-platforms and are also interested in being a deep expert in YouTube, I reckon that is the future um, mm. of, of really being able to make a difference to, to people's businesses, definitely. Yeah. yeah. And so apart from your training, um, so if, if you're a VA out there and you're thinking, yeah, I'd love to do this, I've got a bit of a tech mind would it be going into youtube and learning a little bit more about setting those up or going over to skillshare or you know just to learn figure out what software program you want to use like i use yeah. camtasia to edit all my videos but there's lots of different options out there which yeah. can be what stops people in the beginning there's too That's many right. options and you know what they all pretty much do the same thing mm. so don't there's actually like my son is using for school the Adobe one, whatever that's called. Um, that's Camtasia, isn't it? No. Um, Adobe, uh, Adobe FX? Maybe. There's another yeah. one in that, in that suite. I can't think what it's called off the top of my head. So not Illustrator, not Photoshop. Oh, there's another one. Anyway, 
And that's quite complicated. I don't know if any of you have used Photoshop, but it's an absolute nightmare. They're all that, they are all that complicated. So I say find a platform, be really, uh, sorry, find a, a software and be good at it because they're kind of all very similar. Yeah. They don't, they don't all, you know, the, the sort of mid-range, iMovie's like at the very bottom where it's free, it's really easy for people to use. But, you know, if you want to get a little bit fancier and you want to embed the captions files and change up the title so you can be a, and put animations in for um, Jenny DeLacy, blah, 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 along the bottom. Yeah. Then Camtasia can do that. Filmora does that. There's a few other um, suites that will do it. Yeah. And then, oh, is, oh, yeah, I think it is. I think it's called After Effects. After Effects. Yeah. Yes. That is really complicated. So yes. I would say people that are production specialist, editor, proper editors would use that because, but when you're thinking about freelancers, entrepreneurs, what sort of videos are we going to create? Pretty much talking to camera and we might have some still shots we want you to edit in and maybe some music. It's not as complicated as, as that needs to be. So just pick one and stick to it. It would be um, my advice. And if there's training that's specific to YouTube, I would, there's two people that I follow regularly about YouTube and they're both awesome. One is Owen Hamsmith, Owen Video, he calls himself. He's an American, well, they're, and one of them's Canadian. He's American. He has a, I think it's called YouTube School, something really imaginative like that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Um, and the other one is Sunny Lenarduzzi. So S U Sunny, what? Sunny Lenarduzzi, L E N A D U double Z I. What a great um, name. Yeah, so she is Canadian and delicious. And she, I've followed her for nearly five years now. And when she started out, her very first video was about Snapchat to help a client because she was like a social media VA for this client. And she made this little video and then put it on YouTube. And back then, I think it was probably even easier to be found yeah. and ended up with, you know, she makes a million dollars a year on YouTube. Um, but her course is called YouTube for Bosses and it's really fantastic. YouTube for Bosses. I'll check that out. Yeah, and I did that a while ago and I'm actually going to go back and redo it again because for my own channel because I want to I want my I want to update my channel because I I don't know whether to restart it or whether the thought of restarting is not exciting but at the same time I really want to do it well and she would be the person I would I would say is the best YouTube trainer for business I'll check that out yeah yeah all right. Well, I think that's a lot of food for thought and definitely, yeah, business owners that want to get out there and do more video, one, feel the fear and do it anyway, but two, check out the training that Jenny's got. This isn't just a big spruik. I just believe in her product. Um, and also, yeah, explore what options there are out there so that you can feel comfortable, but don't get stuck in the rabbit hole mm. and, and work with your VA. If you've got a virtual assistant on team or you know someone that's got that kind of techie, you know, urge we all know one they've got techie yeah. urges yeah. um then partner with them and and collaborate to create stuff so that you're both sitting there working on your passions yeah. and creating something great together without having those horrible blocks like with the the mechanics for the creatives and vice versa so yeah, that's right perfect yeah so jenny what's your website if people want to check you out um it's the visibilitycoach.com.au Beautiful. Um, and if you just Google search Jenny DeLacy, you'll find all the other, find me everywhere else as well. Um, and the Step Up program, it's an eight-week online group coaching program. I'm live in there and we really nut out lots of practice and what are you trying to say and who are you are talking to? And then we do the uploading, publishing bit towards the end as well. So um, it's, people seem to come to that from my big group as well, where we talk about visibility. So there's a few different ways to find me, but even if you just Google Jenny, any delay so you'll find me beautiful yeah. now i don't know about you but that lawnmower outside is really starting to get my goat so we're going to finish up <laughs> let's imagine that that lawnmower is background music it's very custom very unique very <laughs> profesh and um and we'll go out with that and uh, i just want to thank you jenny for your time i love talking video stuff with you thank you i loved it too thanks rosie see ya see ya 
Hey, hey, hey. Thank you for listening to the Virtually Yours podcast, Outsourcing Mysteries Exposed. Between now and our next session, I know you're going to be hanging out to take some action on outsourcing in your business. So head on over to virtuallyyours.com.au and you can download some information there about the best ways to outsource for business growth. If you're a virtual assistant, make sure you join us. We have an amazing virtual assistant community at Virtually Yours. Aussie VAs connecting and helping each other grow. Have a fantastic day and I'll see you at the next podcast.